Everybody. Welcome to Edge Match. Thank you so much for tuning in. So right now we have a really special episode featuring a really special guest. So I got to give it up for Mike Drezek. Thank you so much, Mike, for joining us. Thanks so much, Sarah. Yeah, this is great. Uh, I've followed Edge Match for a while. Uh, I follow on Twitter and definitely has helped me professionally. So it's kind of neat to come full circle and actually be hanging out live here for a few. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I'm, I'm super excited to have you on because, I mean, you just do so much amazing work and it's, it's just really a pleasure to chat with you. So I'm going to tell everybody a little bit about you. So Mike is the technology integrator slash teacher leader for the Lakeshore Central School District. He earned a BA in mathematics with second education certification from SUNY uh, Geneseo. How do you pronounce it? Yeah, Geneseo. Geneseo. Yeah, it's a state yeah. public school here at the New York. Gotcha. Geneseo. Cool, cool. And an MSED in educational technology from SUNY Buffalo State. He spent 10 years as a math teacher and a majority of those as a team leader at Lakeshore Middle School. And it's his 14th year at Lakeshore and his fourth as a district technology integrator. So we're going to get into some of Mike's passions in a second, but um, just a couple of them just to kick it off. He's passionate about providing quality learning opportunities for educators and students. And he's also driven to help teachers step out of their comfort zones in the classroom and supporting them along the way. So, oh man, this this is just amazing because I, I see that you're also like really down with the global collaboration, which is what we're all about here at EduMatch. Yeah. So it's, it's so cool to have you on. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah, and uh, I saw you got your uh, PhD there out of the way. Congrats on that. And oh, I, believe, I believe I was watching a Periscope, and it, uh, at some point I saw class of 99. Was that the high school class of 99? So that's, yeah, that's me too. So yes, <laughs> got something to ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Oh, man. So that was a good year. That was a good year. And we, we even have a print song for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, this is awesome. So super excited to chat with you. So could you tell us, like, who or what inspired you to go into education? Yeah. Um, I mean, I always really just, I love school. I love going to school. It was never one of those things where I had to like fight my parents to get out of going to school. I will say that it didn't come easy to me. You know, I was never at like the top of the class or anything like that. Um, I definitely had to work for it. And my mom was a, a special a vision teacher. So she traveled around helping students with vision needs. And my grandmother was a special education teacher. My grandfather was a, a business administrator and a, a superintendent at, at one point. Um, so it was kind of always in the family and it was always a priority, you know, uh, at the education. And I actually didn't have intentions to go into teaching. It was pretty interesting. I, I remember taking a picture. I was in math class. It was my senior year of high school, 1999. And I took a picture of the clock on my little Polaroid fun, Kodak fun saver. And right when the clock struck 145, whatever time it was, boom, I was like, all right, woo, my, my last math class ever. Uh, and I was going to go, my father has a small business. He makes eyeglasses here. And um, I, that's what I was going to go for. I, I worked at his lab. I made eyeglasses. I loved it. You know, I was kind of having fun. I get to college. I, I go, I'm a biology major. And I start taking, you know, it was like the labs and the sciences. And it's just, I wasn't feeling it. I don't know. It was so much reading and all that lab. I just, something wasn't right. Um, and I, I needed the math requirements in that degree. So I'm like, you know what? This isn't for me. Switch to computer science. I'm like, I love computers. I love technology. I'm going to be a computer programmer, still taking the math classes. And my uh, math professors were like the best professors I had of all of the subjects. So I just got drawn into math. And at some point, you know, I, I got thinking, like, what am I going to do with math degree? What do I want to do with math? And just I was just pulled into the teaching. And I was fortunate. Um, I was playing college hockey um, at the time at Geneseo. And I was fortunate that to, I kind of went there for hockey, but knew it was just a really good school. I'm fortunate that they had a really good teaching and education school. Um, and once I started taking some classes there, it just was like the perfect match. And I just, I fell in love. Um, so it kind of like, it, it really happened in college. I just really, I didn't know that I would want to be a teacher. I thought there's no way. Um, and it just, you know, stars aligned and I ended up teaching math at middle school, uh, love middle school whole, the, it's another world, but I love it. And, uh, and here I am, I guess, uh, yeah, 14 years later. So, uh, I think it was yeah, the other family push and. And, and just like my passion to really serve others. I know I, my, at the high school I went to in Buffalo, 
it was, we were big on service and, and serving others. So I knew, you know, I, and my father runs his own business and I know running a small business is you work for yourself and you're driven to earn as much as you can. And, uh, in teaching, I, I just, I don't know, something about just helping other people, um, that I just love helping the students, helping the kids, uh, every year is different. And I don't know, I, I, there's really no place else I'd rather be. I mean, there were some tough years where I was questioning if I was my first year of teaching, oh, surviving that, uh, that <laughs> thinking back to that, but that group, I mean, good Lord, I, uh, but I made it through and, uh, you know, and, and then discovering Twitter and discovering a PLN. And I mean, that, that was a game changer for me when, when, especially when I was questioning, like, man, is this really for me? And, and now it's just. I'm having a blast now. So I'm really glad I stuck with it. And it's definitely where I was meant to be. Yeah, totally. And I was just like nodding my head the whole time because so much of what you said like resonated with me. It's just like, wow, you know, like we can be on different in totally different areas and like still have so many similarities. So yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. That is that is super cool. And yeah. also I, I enjoyed like hearing you tell your story because I had read a little bit about it, like uh because you wrote the forward to to Dean's book that's coming out, the uh the yeah. Y and U that's gonna be dropping April second, I believe. So yeah, nice. Yeah, so definitely just wanted to remind yeah. everyone to check uh, that, that out. Funny. I mean, that's another that's just another example of uh really like the just it's it's about the people, you know. I got into this time I'm doing a technology integrator and and so many, you know, I know for teachers that want to use tech in the classroom, it's about like the apps and it's the, the you know, it's flashy and it's fun, but really it's like that human side of the tech and how it can connect us. I mean, and just being able to connect with someone like Dean, I mean, on Twitter and we, we, we took a family trip down to Orlando and it's like, Hey Dean, I'm in Florida. You want to hang out for a few? And he, you know, he, we, we were hanging out in Disney for a little bit. It's just the people, you know, they say Twitter won't change your life, but the people that you meet there will, I mean, that's, that's so true. Some of the people there, they're just, you, you find your tribe and you get similar interests and passions and it just kind of pushes you uh, in a, in, in, a, in an awesome way. Oh yeah, that is so true. That is so true. I, I love what you said that it's not about Twitter. It's about the people that you meet. So, wow. So what are some, um, <laughs> Some things that you've learned like along the way as you've connected with other educators. Yeah. Um, I mean, just my journey. I remember I made my Twitter account in 2012 and I was still a math teacher at that time. And I, I'm not sure. I knew like everyone was on Facebook and I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to do something different. I'm going to join Twitter. And it was checking the sports updates and the, and the, you know, the, uh, the celebrities and everything else and really for news. And I didn't even think about using it for teaching. And I had gone to a workshop on flip class and it just like blew my mind. So I'm like, I got to flip my math classroom. This is like this. Why didn't I think of this? Oh my gosh. I don't have to be standing up in front of the room talking to the kids the whole time. This is genius. <coughs> Excuse me. And it just led to like so many great conversations in the classroom. So then I like the, how I use social media started to shift and I started to, I'm like searching in the flip class hashtags. I'm getting ideas and resources. And when I'm in my own little suburban middle school in Angola, New York, and there's one other eighth grade math teacher on my floor, like th to be able to go and find these ideas and find these people sharing, it totally like changed the way that I use social media and I connected. Um, and it just helped me to like enjoy <laughs> my teaching more and my job more. And uh, I don't know. And it just kind of went from there. But, uh, you know, I do the Voxer thing a little bit. I'm in like a lot of Voxer channels, but I don't know if people even know I'm there because it's just I, it's like almost like overload for me because I just have, I have two little kids at home and it's just crazy busy. But I, I'll join like a book study and then like I'll be I'm all in. And then I don't know why Twitter. I can just come to Twitter. It's easy. I can just say my thing and get out. And I don't know what it is. What I'll find. I'll get into Voxer more, I'm sure, at some point. I just did my first Periscope. I know some people talked me into doing past the scope edu. So I did one of those when we were on a mystery Skype. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I definitely have to, I just love the idea of that, how it can connect us and how we're just kind of like opening the, our classroom to the world. I mean, I know that there, there's always that fear of, you know, I know that not fear, but it's the privacy concerns of students and everything like that. But I'm, um, you know, on top of who has the right sharing permissions and things like that. And I just think it, it helps other teachers. I mean, it's like on the fly, on the spot, on demand PD, and it inspires me. So I'm, if there's one other person tuning in that says, this is cool. Yeah, uh, it's worth it. So you're passionate about a lot of things. So what <laughs> what are you most passionate about, like in education today? Like maybe some, some strategies, tools, um, yeah. tips? Yeah, I mean, I am obviously most passionate about anything that can connect people. Um, I mean, that's like my driving force. I know my first year of doing this tech integration thing, 
it was a one year grant that the state put out and it was for strengthening teacher leader effectiveness. And I applied, there was like a bunch of teachers in our district that applied for it. I had to interview and going through the, that, I wasn't sure exactly what I was getting into in the educational technology. Um, you know, I think in the beginning, people thought I was there to like fix their smart board or their printer or, you know, reset passwords or whatever it was. Um, but, you know, it's kind of shifted. I mean, I remember at one point asking my assistant superintendent to order a, a, some mini drones. <laughs> and the Amazon's like, what are you going to do with mini drone? I'm like, you know what? We're, we're going to code these things. We're going to fly them around through an obstacle course. Um, but so I think like I, once I realized that, that you could just use technology so creatively in, in different ways, it kind of just, people don't even ask me to fix that. <laughs> people don't ask those, those other simple things that it kind of started out as. And um, the global collaboration is really, that's my big time passion. Uh, I've met so many great people and it's just amazing to see what, how other classrooms around the world are learning, how kids are uh, developing empathy by connecting with other classrooms. Um, my first venture into that was a program called Lumined and what they were doing, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it was the bright orange box and it was a startup. It was on Kickstarter. It was where I saw it. It was four schools and they were building these 3G enabled um, projectors that would go into classrooms in India so we sponsored a box and we got partnered up with classrooms in India, in, De uh, in Delhi, and that were part of the Teach for India program. And um, there was like a dashboard and we were able to have exchanges back and forth. And it was, it was amazing. It was so cool. I was like, this is the greatest thing ever. I never would have thought of using technology in this way. I mean, now these, these students that don't have any internet access in their school are getting connected. They're learning with us. They're going outside and showing us the games that they play in the courtyard. And our students are talking about the games that we play here in New York. And it just kind of took off from there. From there on Twitter, that's like I got into like the global ad hashtag. And I'm just like scouring that, like what kind of projects and activities are out there? Um, because I, I not once have I gone into a classroom with one of these opportunities and have had a teacher complain. Like it's they're, they're, they're they like having someone there to help them with the tech side of it and making sure the tech goes smooth. But once you get over that hurdle and they realize like how easy it is to connect now with a couple clicks, I mean, it's, it's the possibilities are endless. So, uh, but that's this. So that's my passion. I really like, uh, like the makerspace idea, the coding and the robotics. I've done a lot of stuff with that. Um, Game-based learning, done a lot of stuff with like Minecraft and virtual worlds. And I mean, I, I like, I don't know. I, I'm, sometimes I'm, I feel like I'm a squirrel. Like, oh yeah, that looks cool. I'm going to go do that. I'm just trying to dabble in everything. But I feel like I have to be ready to if someone asks me something in a school district that's K-12, I need I'd like to have an answer or to be able to go out to my tribe and ask like, hey, what's out there? Um, and so that's why I kind of just try to stay on top of it all. Uh, but it can get overwhelming when someone said, like being on Twitter is like drinking from a fire hydrant. <laughs> uh, so at some point, you know, I just like to try to focus on a few things instead of trying to do everything but right i feel you and and i i was like nodding my head emphatically when you were talking about like how when you first got in there people were asking you to like fix their printer connect <laughs> their you know whatever um so i guess like inquiring minds me want to know <laughs> how did um like how did that that shift happen like what were like some some things that got people to start seeing you in a different in a different light yeah, I think, I mean, going into some faculty meetings and um, like presenting and sharing with them, like last year, I would try to host like two different PD sessions every month. There were times where I set up shop in a school and I brought all like my gizmos and gadgets and different things like that. And I would and I had like people pop their head in and ask questions about that. And, um, you know, we, we use Seesaw for schools for digital portfolios and uh, just be showing the teachers like how they can use technology differently. You know, it's not just like marking up a PDF with uh, an inking tool or we can get so much deeper than that. And I think it was just just to keep at it and just to keep on, you know, using the technology in the right ways that just starts to shift people's mind. And, they, and then teachers talk to each other. They when someone does something fun and because and, we have like there's multiple teachers in a grade level and I never want to be exclusive. So, I, you know, I'm, if you want to do something, hey, reach out. I, I've got a, you can book me calendar. You don't even have to ask. Just book me. I'll come to your room. We will make it happen. And um, I think it was just, that, you know, eventually word spread. And now that we're in year four, um, it got it really went so well. We have a second uh, tech integrator, which is awesome because now I'm not on an island. I'm not by myself. So uh, and, and it's uh, Susan Waltrich. She came out of the library. She's a library media specialist for our district. And she's fantastic. Um, so it's nice to be able to have someone to bounce ideas off of and 
tag team on projects or, uh, you know, we're, we're running in a million different directions at times, but I think it just goes to show um, that how we got away from just the simple, like, we're not tech help. We're like tech, I don't know, the explorers, like we're, we want to get deep. <laughs> I feel you on that. So that that is super cool, super cool. So you mentioned Minecraft is uh, one of the things that that you know really interests you. So what's been your journey to using it, like in your learning space? Yeah, um, and I and I gotta say too, as we get into Minecraft, like our administration has been so supportive of these ventures by going for the grant to get this position going. And uh, it was actually our assistant superintendent, uh, Melissa Burglar. She saw something that was going on about a Minecraft training. So she said, hey, do you want to go to a Minecraft training? Now, I had never played Minecraft before. Any sport, video games I played growing up, it was like sports games. I'm playing ice hockey, Madden, football, all that. I wasn't really into those adventure games. And uh, yeah, what the heck, I'll go. So we go to a full day Minecraft workshop. And, and we were there with uh, a couple other fourth grade teachers that wanted to learn it. And I could, we were laughing because we didn't know what we were doing. We're like get drowning in the water in Minecraft and we're getting dizzy. And I, we're like, how do these kids do this? This is, this is nuts. Um, but then, we, you know, in the second half of the day, after we got our feet wet, they started talking about all of the educational applications to Minecraft. And that's what opened my eyes. Like, Whoa, okay, now, I'm, now my head's spinning. Like, yeah, we can use this in class. So they got a cart of computers. They installed Minecraft EDU. This was before Microsoft bought it. Um, and there's a guy, uh, Antonio Scordo is, is a Minecraft trainer. He created a math world with his son. So there's houses and gardens and pools. And we brought this into the math classroom and the kids are doing area and perimeter and volume and they go and there's a, a wizard's tower and they have to solve problems to earn building blocks to go off into the free build area. And it was really neat. Uh, just uh, the kids were so engaged. The room is just a buzz. No one's off task. Everyone, you know, they're, they're with their friends. It's all, everyone's in that space. It's just amazing. And um, back to the global ed, at one point I'm just scouring the Minecraft EDU hashtag on Twitter. And I see a guy from Italy saying, Hey, we want to do this global art project. Anyone interested? I'm like art. Okay. Yeah. So we, there's a mod apparently called creatables. And I, I don't know what I'm doing. Thank goodness that we have an awesome IT team. And the guy over there knew Minecraft. He played himself. So I'm like, hey, can we? Can you help me with a mod? I don't even know what a mod is. Can you put creatables on um, on our Minecrafts? And there's a server in Australia and, um, and or in Italy. And there's schools in Australia and all over the world that are getting onto this server. So my tech departments are like, are you crazy? So all the Minecraft is like blocked by our region. They're like, no way. We do not want kids connecting to these Minecraft servers. You know, it was like, how is in Germany? So I tried to explain to them what we were using it for. I, I mean, like I push and push. Eventually, they're like, okay, just leave us alone. We're going to open it up. You better be right about this. <laughs> so uh, the kid, they open it up, and the kids are taking pictures on their iPad of, like, their physical art sculptures. They're importing them into Minecraft, and they're, like, putting them on a gallery in the Louvre Museum that they replicated. And there's kids from Japan in there and Serbia and British Columbia and Canada. And the kids are, like, walking around this art gallery. And uh, my Twitter banner, uh, I, I'll leave it up there as long as I, unless something happens to it, but the kids had to build their community in Minecraft. And I, could, I had a kid build Niagara Falls and put like a switch on there that shut the falls off because that's what they can do when they need to service Niagara Falls in real life. They built a pixel art eagle, which is our school mascot. Uh, we have a Seneca Nation of Indians. Uh, is a high population in our school district. They built their uh, logo on the ground. They built a bounce house. They had a, a rainbow uh, beacon lights and it was just so cool. And then the, we could teleport ourselves to go to the it Italy's community and Australia's community. And it was just like, holy cow, we're doing all of this in Minecraft. This is so cool. Um, and there were kids on the server at the same time. So they're like talking to each other in the chat. I mean, and it was, we didn't have any discipline problems. I mean, it, 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 they were, because it was engaging and they were, they, you know, they knew that it was special. Um, we had, we've even done regional like obstacle course build challenges with our local regional tech center where the kit, schools put together a team of four students. They get, they go in in a, a blank world and they're like essentially dropped into this world. They have an hour to build uh, in Minecraft and the other teams have eight minutes to try to get through the uh, obstacle courses. And they have like medals for the kids. They have Minecraft cookies and everything that the culinary students bake in the career tech ed program is really a, uh, I don't know. We're doing a lot with it. Uh, it's yeah. And then there was a literature world. I know that that same school from Australia had a server. They're like, Hey, do you kids want to leave like book reviews in Minecraft and build the characters and pixel art and drop like a book review in a treasure chest and the kids can go and pick each other's books up. Uh, I'm like, yeah, this is, yeah, let's go for it. So uh, eventually they, they, I didn't have to argue, like 
uh, I guess, um, defend why we needed Minecraft anymore in schools. You know, <laughs> some teachers are looking at me like, what are you doing? What, what are they doing with Minecraft? Uh, but then at one point where we're, I had a math uh, lesson, I went in and I wanted the kids to do fractions. So we're building fraction models with glass and glowstone blocks and every kid's like adding fractions and glass and glowstone and they're going around and checking each other's fraction builds out. So I, I get geeky. Yeah, that is super cool. You're like blowing my mind right now because I didn't even know that some of this stuff was possible. Like we have a Minecraft uh, workshop that we're doing at work this week and I'm I'm super excited to to go and learn. So now you got me like super, super pumped up about yeah. this. Yeah, there's so much. And the thing is like, I don't even, I don't really understand it all. Like, and you don't have to. That's the thing I try to tell people is like, just if the kids will teach you, they teach me. Like I ask them and they tell me exactly what to do. And um, I mean, it's, I just let, just let them go, just kind of get out of their way and be a guide on the side. And it's, it's, it's powerful. Yeah, totally. That is awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> so it sounds like you have like a lot, a lot of, of great things going on um, for you uh, and for your school. So, so what kinds of things can we expect to see from you in 2018? Oh yeah. Um, 2018. So I've never been to ISTE. And I'm probably not going to get there again this year. It's just tough. My wife's a teacher as well, and she's still in school at that time. But um, I'm going to get to the Canada Connect Conference. It's like Canada's ISTE. Um, it's in Niagara Falls. So it's just a hop, skip, and a jump for me over the border. And uh, I'll be presenting a session there called Digitize Your Diorama. And uh, we have basically our students who built longhouses. Um, I have had them building them in virtual reality and co-spaces and coding their uh, space. So some other uh, teachers, some from Canada and some from the US took them and used like uh, scratch and makey makeys and just bring, bringing the physical diorama to life. So got that going on, um, but more global collaboration. Uh, we're doing some stuff with uh, Beluga, doing a lot of stuff with Bonsi, um, just a lot of the tools out there that are, uh, you know, Flipgrid, um, our global classroom. I've got a little collaboration going with the teacher over there, uh, Bronwyn Joyce, and uh, and then Melinda Hurt from over here. And uh, just trying to get kids to share their voice to that Flipgrid and uh, connect in that way. I've got, we've got this Trans-Pacific um, Padlet going with a school in Japan and uh, some schools in Australia, which is pretty neat. So our kids were learning about Japan. So that in Britain Padlet, now that you can record video, they're like recording their video and, and uploading and they're having conversations with these kids around the world. It's pretty wild. So um, I've got that going on. Um, what else? We have a global STEM hub going right now. Uh, we The kids have their own blog and every other month we draw STEM challenges. And this is in uh, grade seven science. Uh, there's the American International School of Guangzhou in China and some schools in Canada. And they, they actually, it's cool because the kids um, groups in solving these STEM challenges are not within their own class. They actually have to work with kids from the other schools and post the stuff to their blogs. And um, and they also, this year we started a Flipgrid as well. So we're sparking, we're hitting the um, emoji reactions on the responses and trying to spark responses that were really good. Um, so that's been a really neat project that started last year and has kind of evolved. Uh, that's what I love is like the unknown. Like, I don't know what the rest of 2018 is going to bring, you know? Um, and that's kind of the fun of it too. Um, we're our, my, the IT guy that's helped me with the Minecraft. Uh, we, since last year, we brainstormed about building this augmented reality sandbox and it's almost ready. I know you've, you may have seen them. There's like 500 in the world and it uses Linux. And I think it like Berkeley started it. They put the source code out there. They give you the specs, it uses a Microsoft connect sensor and throws it down on the sand. So we have uh, like water and lava and we're going to use that into the science classrooms to do some stuff with uh, topography. Uh, so that should be fun. Um, been doing some stuff with like Google Expeditions and Nearpod VR. Um, our high school kids right now are making a 360 virtual tour uh, in ThingLink of their high school for the incoming freshmen. And we're linking like their flip good responses to teachers like give like you, we're going to they're going to go through the school in VR and meet their teachers. Um, so it's kind of that's something fun. I don't know. We just I just if some, an idea pops into my head, I think I just try it. I don't really do too much analyzing on uh, if it, it, you know, how effective is this going to be? If it if it flops, then I'll scrap it for <laughs> for next time. But. Yeah, that's definitely the attitude uh, to have, you know, definitely jumping in and, and trying new things. So so that is dope. I love it. I love it. So many great ideas. Like, I'm I'm just super. I, they're not all my, like, I don't think I have original ideas. <laughs> I get them all from Twitter and I just remix them or, or borrow them. It's always someone else that should get the credit. But 
Oh, I feel you. I feel you. But I mean, you know, putting it putting it into effect, like implementing it, you know, then that's 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 uh, more than half the battle right there. So, yeah, so yeah. awesome. So so thanks so much for for joining us today. And how can people get in touch with you online if they want to connect with you? Yeah, um, I'm on Twitter. It's uh, M underscore Drez, D-R-E-Z. And I guess I started that that name just, I made that when I started my Twitter account in 2012 and I just left it. So I probably should have rethought that, but oh well. It's when there was only 140 characters, I guess it only was five characters long, so or six, it helped. Anyway, uh, yeah, I have a blog at michaeldresick.com. Um, I certainly don't write there enough, but I, you know, every once in a while I'll, I'll get something up there. Um, so that's really it. I've got my, my blog and my Twitter handle is really the best uh, way to go. So that is awesome. But thank thank you so much for uh, for taking the time out to to chat with us today. It's truly, truly a pleasure to to connect with you on here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. This was fun. Yeah, I, I love watching these too. Like I always, I'm sometimes busy on a Saturday, but when you have them, I always try to go back and catch the replay. It's just a great way to learn to see what other people are up to because it's that's where I get my ideas. Like I said, <laughs> borrowing them from someone else. So uh, keep on the, keep the show going as long as you can because I love it. I love stuff like this. Oh, thank you so much. Absolutely, will do. So just wanted to thank everyone who will be uh, checking this out later. So um, we're gonna have it up and. Uh, Hopefully within the next few weeks, then it'll be available as a podcast as well. So, Everybody so. have a wonderful day and thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. Edge match. It's edge match.